In this video, I will show you how to create a new ASP.NET web application using Visual Studio Code and how to connect to SQL Server database using Entity Framework. So first, it is necessary to check that the .NET SDK is installed on your computer. So we can open the terminal or the command prompt. And here let's type .NET hyphen hyphen version. And here we can see that I have .NET 8. So if the .NET SDK is not installed, then it is necessary to install it. So here we can type .NET. Let's go to the first link. Then download. And you can download and install this version of the .NET SDK. So we can click on this button. Then we can click on this link. Then we can save the installer. Also, we need to install the SQL Server. So here we can type SQL Server. Let's go to the first link. Then here we can download and install the Express Edition. So to check that the SQL Server is running, we can make a search. Let's type SQL Server. Then let's select SQL Server Configuration Manager. So here we can see that the server is already running. Then we need to install several extensions in VS Code. So the first extension is the C Sharp extension. So this is it. It is from Microsoft. And it provides the auto completion feature. So it is already installed in my case. Then we need C Sharp extensions. So this is the extension. It is from this developer and we need also to install it. So it allows us to create C Sharp classes. Then we need the NuGet package manager. So just here, let's type NuGet package manager. So this is the extension. This is the developer and it allows us to add and to remove packages. In my case, it is also installed. Now let's create a new application. I will create it in the documents folder. And here I have a folder called VS Code Projects. So let's create a new folder. And let's call it Web App 3, for example. Let's select it. So for the moment, the folder is empty and we need to create a new application. So let's open the terminal. And here let's type .NET new list. So here we have the full list of the available templates and we need to create a new web application. So we have to use this short name. So we can also create an MVC application or also a web API. And this is the full list of templates. So we can use this short name to create a new application using Razor Pages. So just here, let's type .NET new, then web app. So now the application has been created correctly and to run it, we can use .NET run. Now the application is running and it is available at this URL. So we can click on follow link and we obtain this application. So to stop the application, we can use Ctrl and C. Now let's install the required packages to connect to the database using Entity Framework. So we can click on this icon, then Command Palette, then here let's write NuGet Package Manager. Then let's select NuGet Package Manager, then Add Package. So we need to connect to SQL Server, that's why we have to type SQL Server. Let's press Enter to make a search. And let's install this package, it is from Entity Framework Core. 
So because I have .NET 8 on my computer, I will not select a version that is higher than the version that I have. So I will select the version 8. Then we need the design package. So let's click on this icon again, then command palette, then nuget package manager add package, and let's type design. Let's press enter. Let's select entity framework core design. The version is 8 and it has been added to this application. Now let's add the connection string that allows us to connect to the database to the file appsettings.json. So here let's add a new key. Let's call it connection strings. Then let's define the first connection string. We can call it default connection. So here the server is dot, which means the local machine. This is the name of the database. It does not exist, so it will be created. I will use Windows authentication. So here we have trusted connection is equal to true. And also we have to use trust server certificate equal true. Let's save the file. Now let's create the DB context class that allows us to connect to the database. So it is a service, so we need to create a new folder in this application. We can click here, then let's add a new folder, and let's call it services. Then let's add a new class. Let's call it application DB context. So this class extends the DB context class of entity framework. So here let's add column then DB context. Let's add the package. Then let's create the constructor. So here we need a parameter of type DB context options. Let's call it options. And let's pass it to the base class. Let's save the file. And let's add this class to the service container. So let's go to program.cs. Then let's add the application DB context to the service container. So we will add the application DB context to the service container. And also we will use the SQL server. This is the connection string that we added in the file appsettings.json. So it is called default connection, which is the name of this key. Now we need to add the required packages. And let's save the file. Now we need to create a new model that allows us to create a new table in the database and also that allows us to read and write the data in the database. So let's create a new folder in our application. Let's call it models. Then let's add a new class. Let's call it product. Then let's define the different properties. So we need the product ID, the product name, the brand, category, the price, description, and the date. So here the price should have this precision. Let's add the required package. Let's save the file. Then let's create a new property in application DB context that allows us to read and write the data in the products table. So the property is of type DB set and the type is the product model. Let's call this property products. So products will be the name of the table in the database. Then let's initialize this table with some data. So we need to override the method on model creating. So these are four products that we will add to the products table in the database. Now let's save the file. Now let's create a new migration file. So let's go back to the terminal. And let's type .NET EF migrations add, and this is the name of the migration that we will create. Of course, we can call it as we want.
let's press enter but here we can see that we have this error so we need to install the .NET EF tool so just here let's type .NET tool install then we will install it globally and this is the name of the tool let's press enter and here we can see that the version 8.0.2 has been installed now let's execute this command again but it did not work so here we can see that the version of .NET that I have is not compliant with this version of the tool that we installed so we need to uninstall this tool and to install the correct version so we can copy this command let's paste it here let's replace install with uninstall then here let's add the version so I want the version 8.0.0 so now this version has been installed let's create the migration file again so we need to type .NET EF migrations add and the name of the migration file now the migration file has been created correctly and it is available in the migrations folder so here we have this file which is our migration file so it allows us to create the products table now let's create the table so we have to type .NET EF database update so now the table has been created correctly we can see it using SSMS or also we can install a new extension in VS Code that allows us to see the available tables let's click on this extensions button and here let's type SQL Server let's select this extension from Microsoft and let's install it so it has been installed correctly and now we have this new icon let's click on it then let's create a new connection we can click on this button so the server is the local machine so let's type dot then the database is called DB2000 so let's write DB2000 and let's use the Windows authentication so let's select integrated so the profile name is optional let's press enter and let's click on enable trust server certificate so let's expand tables and here we can see that we have the products table let's expand columns and we have these columns so to see the data of this table we can make a right click then select top 1000 and here we can see that we have these four products now let's create a new razor page that allows us to display the available products from the database so let's go to the pages folder and just here let's create a new razor page so we can go to new C sharp then razor page and let's call it products so this is the razor page and this is the corresponding model so in this class we need the application DB context that we added to the service container that allows us to read the data from the database also we don't need this field so let's delete it let's delete it from here as well and let's delete this statement and because we need the application DB context we need to request it in the constructor let's call it context then let's save it into a field so we can use this button then create and assign field context so we have this field that has been initialized just here now let's use this context to read the products from the database also let's create a property in this class where we will save the available products so it should be public and it is of type list of product objects
let's call it product list and to get rid of this warning we can initialize it with an empty list now let's fill this list from the database in the onGet method so because this property is public we can access it in the page so let's save the file let's go to the page let's delete this div and let's replace it with a bootstrap table so this is a bootstrap table this is the first row that contains the name of the different columns so we have the product id the product name the brand category the price and the date and for every product in product list we will create a new table row now let's save the file and let's add a link to this page in the navbar so let's go to the pages folder that we have shared then let's open the layout file so this is the navbar and we have these two items so this is the first item it is the home item and this is the privacy item let's copy the first item let's paste it here let's call it products and let's provide the name of the razor page which is products let's save the file and let's run the application so let's type .NET run let's go to this link then products and this is the list of products that we have in the database 